what gets measured gets done. But there are important things that can't be measured. Hi, everybody. My name is Greg Crable, and this is my daily podcast, Something I Learned Yesterday, in which I take one issue from the world of publishing and try to explain it in about three or four minutes. There's two sides to advertising, buying it and selling it. In terms of selling, when a publisher is selling advertising, audience is the key. The publisher wants to convince the advertiser that the publisher has access to the audience the advertiser wants to reach. The other part of that equation is the creative, of course, but I'm not going to get into that today. I want to focus on buying advertising. Back in the days when print advertising ruled, it was understood that the advertiser couldn't make a direct mathematical connection between an ad and a sale. There's that famous quote we all know about half our ads being useless, but we don't know which half. The internet has led some people to believe that we can know that, that we can calculate the effect of an ad. This is largely because the internet is just lots of computers and they can track things. We get all this data and we can put it into spreadsheets and in the spreadsheet we can sum things. We can do all kinds of mathematical wizardry and get a number, right? But this reminds me too much of that old saying that when your only tool is a hammer, everything begins to look like a nail. When you use computers too much, you start to think everything is math. You forget about the real world side of things. For example, in the early days of internet advertising, mm -hmm. an ad was considered to have been displayed to a visitor, even if it was way down on the page and the visitor never got that far down the page. That's what you get with the tyranny of numbers. If you can assign a number to something, it seems more reliable. That's a type of anchoring bias, by the way. That's why people put numbers in subject lines. Bob Hoffman reports some very interesting cases where advertising stats were completely wrong. Some error in the coding made people believe they were advertising on one site when all their ads were actually being displayed on other places. In addition to all this error that can crop up, there's just plain old fashioned fraud, which also happens. So just because we can gather lots of stats and put them in spreadsheets, doesn't mean we really know what's going on. It doesn't mean that we can attach an ROI to ads. We see a similar phenomenon in social media. My friend Matt Bailey had a post the other day about this. People want to calculate the return on investment of social media. It's just not really possible to do that with any precision. I think spending money on advertising and social media is just a regular business expense. We want to quantify it. We want to know if we're spending too much or too little. Obviously, we have to ask those questions, but it's very difficult to nail that down. I think we're going to have to get comfortable with some amount of ambiguity about these things. You can't assign a precise number to the effect of an ad or to the effect of social media. Well, that's my take. I'm curious what you think. Let me know in the comments. And if I can help you out with your business in any way, please remember to contact me. My information is on the next screen. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.